Christ must be one each day and each night through darkness and through light cry it out to the world Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in alhamdulillah in nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بالليفل برادرس وسترز في الإسلام we meet once again I will repeat the statement that I made earlier that this is what I learned it is not necessary that I'm speaking on behalf of every Muslim on the planet of Earth. No, I'm speaking for the majority of people, but I can only speak for myself. And I want to go these reflections and lessons that we can learn from this beautiful religion of Islam, Deen al-Islam. And the lesson that I learned that I'd like to share with you this moment, that I'd like to share with you today, is the power of faith, the power of al Iman. When a mu'min has strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he capitalizes on that, nothing matters after that. And you can also go back to the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and read the Quran that has been revealed to that man, Messenger of Allah, Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with your own conclusion, you would have no other option but to understand, but to believe that the power of faith exists. If you recall, when in the battle of Badr, when the Sahaba of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were only 300 companions, most of the Sahaba were from Aus Wal Khazraj. And the Muhajirin were the smaller or the one the small groups. And the enemy, the number of their enemy was three times the number of Muslims. And they knew the fact that they will meet their enemy, who's larger in numbers, more powerful in weapons, more equipped. But they decided to go ahead and put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah states in the Quran, and the day of Badr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the victory, when you're small in numbers, and subhanallah, it is the power of faith, is the power of Iman that made those Sahaba overcome the number of the enemy. And you also recall Ashab al-Ukhdud. When one of them, one of the ladies who declared there's only one God worthy of worship and the king of that time decided to punish anyone who goes against his teaching and he brought her with her children and that ditch that we all know about, he starts throwing her children one after another until was only her and her suckling child. And then she started having second opinion. And she said, maybe if I claim that he is God, the king, maybe I can save my child. And I can save myself. And then the child, the infant, spoke to her. And he said, Ya Ummah, O mother, proceed. فَإِنَّكِ عَلَى الْحَقِّ you are upon the truth. Proceed and don't be afraid of death. This was the power of Iman. And there's a lot of different stories from the life of the Messenger of Allah. And one of them, with Hadith Sahih, is an authentic Hadith. While the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was traveling with the companions and everyone, of course, during their resting time, they went under the shades of trees. So they were scattered. This Sahabi, with that Sahabi, they find shade under that tree. 
And these five Sahabis, they found a shade under the other tree. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by himself, was sleeping under a tree. And he hung his sword on one of the branches of that tree. Now one of the enemies of the Messenger of Allah, he was following the army of Islam. And when he realized all the Sahaba are asleep, and there is no one to guard the Messenger of Allah, he came to the tree where the Messenger of Allah was lying under. And he calmly took the sword, and he went to the Messenger of Allah, and he pointed the sword to his throat, and he said to him, Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, who is going to save you from me today? Messenger of Allah, he sat up, and he said, Allah, Allah is going to save me from you. And when he said that, that man's hand could no longer hold the sword, and he dropped the sword. And then the Messenger of Allah took the sword back, and he pointed to the man and he said, And who's going to save you from me today? Who's going to save you from me? And the man said, Oh Muhammad, you are a decent man. Please do not harm me. The lesson that you can learn from this hadith is this. The Messenger of Allah had so much faith in Allah, that with full confidence he came forward and he said, Allah will save me from you. And the man dropped the sword. By the power of Allah. In one of the most fascinating stories that shows the power of faith. And when a mu'min has faith, nothing can stop him. And Nuh, the messenger of Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ And his people, they reject the message. He said, قَالَ رَبِّنْ صُرْنِي بِمَا كَذَّبُونَ Allah, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, he said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ And indeed we have sent Nuh to his people. فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ And he said to his people, O oh my people, worship Allah your Creator. And then the mala of his people, the elite, they said, no, we will not accept your message. As a matter of fact, they call him a liar. And then Nuh said, رَبِّ انصُرْنِ بِمَا كَذَّبُونَ Oh Allah, aid me, help me. Through this difficult time, and Allah revealed to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to build the ark. The lesson is, look at the faith of Nuh. Maybe some of you may say, I'm not Nuh. I'm not Ibrahim. I'm not Muhammad. I'm not the messenger of Allah. I'm not any of the messengers of Allah. I'm not a companion of Allah. I am a simple Muslim. Now listen to this. Even you as a simple Muslim mu'min, if you put your trust in Allah, you can overcome any difficulties. Even the difficulties that seems to be impossible to overcome, yet, if you have faith in Allah, you can overcome. And listen to this. al Arsalan. Young commander, when the Muslims were fighting the non-Muslims, they went jihad fi jihad fi sabilillah, and they came back. And he came back for whatever left from the army that he initially led. But this time he only came back with 15,000 soldiers. And insha'Allah, short after the commercial, we would explain the meaning of that ayah, idni subhanahu wa ta'ala. So stay where you are and be back in a minute. Assalamu alaikum. Through darkness and through light. I wanted to share with you to share with you some of the ayat of the Quran of the Quran.
and some of the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Care and affection, guidance and encouragement, dedication and vision. Which give us an indication and an instruction. Uplifting the horizons of the child in an Islamically sound way. As to how to be good Muslim parents. parents. Muhammad Tim Humble. Welcome to a brand new series. 26 ways to be a good Muslim parent. Muslim parent. Imbibe the various qualities of ideal parents essential for their children's upbringing and betterment from 26 ways to be a good Muslim parent today at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda. Mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik tonight at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Explore the options. Match the qualities. Assure the success. 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 What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms. Interactive, challenging, collaborative, distributive focus, student-centered. Let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children. To judge this quality precisely, join me on Peace TV. Join Dr. Mandu Muhammad in Teaching at School, next on Peace TV. Through darkness and through light. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and welcome back. And I assume you want to know who is creator. Allah, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, He said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ And indeed we have sent Nuh to his people. فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ And he said to his people, O oh my people, worship Allah your creator. And then the mala of his people, the elite, they said, no, we will not accept your message. As a matter of fact, they call him a liar. And then Nuh said, Rabbin sulni bima kathabun. Oh Allah, aid me, help me through this difficult time. And Allah revealed to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to build the ark. The lesson is, look at the faith of Nuh. Maybe some of you may say, I'm not Nuh, I'm not Ibrahim, I'm not Muhammad, I'm not the messenger of Allah, I'm not any of the messengers of Allah, I'm not the companion of Allah, I am a simple Muslim. Now listen to this, even you as a simple Muslim mu'min, if you put your trust in Allah, you can overcome any difficulties. Even the difficulties that seems to be impossible to overcome, yet, if you have faith in Allah, you can overcome. And listen to this. Alb Arsalan, young commander, when the Muslims were fighting the Muslims, they went jihad fi jihad fi sabilillah, 
and they came back. And he came back for whatever left from the army that he initially let. But this time he only came back with 15,000 soldiers. Some of them are wounded. Some of them are sick. Some of them are tired. Some of them are hungry. They just came back from a war. And then he learned in his way to his home that the army, that the enemy of Allah gathered together in a assembly that was never mentioned ever before, that was never seen ever before at his time. And they gather in a large number to the point that the ulama said 600,000 soldiers got together to attack the Muslims. And Alba Arsalani realized at that place, at that moment, that city, that ummah, that group of people, the only hope that they have against this enemy is for him to try to stop them with the 15,000 soldiers that he is leading. But he looked at the condition of his people. He looked at the condition of the soldiers, wounded ones, hardly walking wounded ones, letting alone carrying a weapon, sick ones, tired ones. And then Alba Arsalan, rahimahullah, he went back to his tent and he took ghusl and he put his shrouds on and he put the hanut on and this is the things that we do for the deceased for a person who died we put that sense and we put the hanu we put the coven or we put the shrouds over him but al alb arsalan he did it by himself and he came to his people 15,000 soldiers and he said to them Ikhwati, my brothers, Al-Islam al-yawma fi khatar. Islam is in danger today. And there is no one to protect and defend Islam today except us. Ha ana da qad tahannat. Look at me. I'm ready for death. I took the ghusl of janazah. I put the shroud of a deceased. I am marching towards that. I am going to meet my enemy for Allah to resurrect me from this point. Whoever wants to be like me, let him go back and do what I did. You would assume that some of the Muslims may say, Subhanallah, 600,000 against 15,000 soldiers, which means for every Muslim, there would be 40 non-Muslim. For every person would be that number of non-Muslim. And it is not possible logically to defeat them. Maybe the only way out is to move out of their way and let them do whatever they want to do. But they were not like us. They were not like us who would give up Islam that easy. Who would say, Allah will take care of Islam. But they went back. Those who are wounded, they went back. Those who were tired, they went back. Those who were fit, they went back to the tent. And they took ghusl. And they put their shrouds on. And they came out with their swords. And then they said, we are ready. Allahu Akbar. And then the two enemy met. For taqal jam'an, and the dust reached the sky. And the sound of the sword clashing one another was louder than the thunder itself. And the people didn't know who they were fighting. And as though they were in the middle of a cloud. They could not see who was who and who was what and who was in front of you. And then in the midst of that, a sound came out of nowhere. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. A'azza Nasr al-Junda wa A'azza Ibadah. Allah aided his slaves and he honored his deen. And then they say, Allahu Akbar, we are victorious over 600,000 soldiers. You may see or you may think 
This is impossible, but it is the power of faith, ikhwati fillah. It is only the power of faith. And the people who were there, they cried. And they cried not because they missed anything from this world, but they cried because they thought Allah will resurrect them from that spot. They thought that the day of Yawm al Qiyamah would come and the earth would open up and the souls will gush in a spring from that land with their blood on, with their broken swords, and they will fly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, they will say to Allah, Ya Allah, we were killed for your sake. But that did not happen. They were sad because they missed that opportunity. And Alb al Arsalan, Al Alb Arsalan, he looked down and he weeped for a long time. For a long, long time. And he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he praised the Creator who gave him a victory over that large number of disbelievers. And he dragged his sword and himself to the tent. And alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, for the power of faith. It only can happen. This can only happen if you have faith in your Creator. Because that faith would allow you to overcome any difficulties. And you remember, Ya Ikhwati Fillah, the similar thing when the Ar-Risala, when a message came to Salah Haddin, a letter came to Salah Haddin. And Salah Haddin, he opened the letter. And the letter says, Ya Ayyuhal Malik Alladhi Lima Alim Sulbani Nakkas, Jaatka Dalamat Tasa Min Al Bayt Al Muqaddas, Kullu Al Majid Tuhirat. This message came on behalf of Masjid al-Aqsa. That was under the hands of the Salibiyin at that time. And the letter says, Ya ayyuha al-Malik or the king who ruled the enemy of Allah. This is a simple letter coming from Bayt al-Masjid al-Aqsa. All the masajid has been purified. And in spite of my status, I have been impured. Subhanallah. What did Salah Haddin did after he received that letter? Salah Haddin, when he learned, when he received the letter, he ordered his soldiers that they should not laugh, that they should not waste time. That they should not entertain themselves. They should only pray to Allah. They should do Qiyam al Layl. They should recite the book of Allah. And one of the soldiers, he saw him one day, gloomy, Salah Haddin. And he said to Salah Haddin, Why are you always gloomy like this? Why are you not smiling? And then Salah Haddin said, Astahi an yarani Allahu dahika. I'm ashamed. I feel ashamed. For Allah to see me smiling and laughing. And Masjid al Aqsa is in the hands of the enemy of Allah. Subhanallah. And then Salah Haddin rahimahullah. He assembled an army that was never ever seen before. And he walked into the Masjid al-Aqsa. And he marched towards the Masjid al-Aqsa. And he conquered Masjid al-Aqsa. Walillahi alhamd. But we, as Muslims, brothers and sisters, we waste effort of those individuals. And once again, the Masjid al-Aqsa is in the hands of its enemy. And what have we done? Nothing. Where is the faith of Salah Hadin? Where is the Iman of Al Barsalan? Where is the Iman of the Sahaba? 
None of that exists today, and unless we have that in our heart, and we do see the power of faith, nothing from the condition of the Ummah will change. So let us all march and walk towards change. Change, the inner change, the change of our Iman, the status of our Iman. And this is what I have to say. Subhanahu subhanahu wa al-azati amma yisifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Those who wait, the patient ones always win. Victory is with those who never let go of me.